Okay, welcome back. So in my previous video, I did a uh, center focused uh, rock build up or outcropping. So today I'm going to do a um, uh, side and side outcropping and leave the middle empty. And what that does is it gives some of the larger fish some room to kind of uh, swim in between rather than getting stuck with that middle outcropping. So the first thing I'm gonna do with my rock selection is I'm gonna take some of the bigger rocks and put them on each side and then I'm gonna build it up and feather it down towards the middle. So have a look. So a rock like this, I would consider a bigger rock. So I'm just going to find the flatter part and put it on the bottom. I'm going to put it kind of towards the back. Um, statically, you want an opening in the front so the fish can go towards the front. We'll put another one over here. And again, this is a uh, coral type rock. It does bleed off a little bit of pH, which is going to make your water a little bit more um, alkaline. So keep that in mind. Again, a couple larger rocks. This one's pretty sweet because it's got holes in it and stuff. So when I stack these, I'm doing two things. I'm trying to leave a little bit of opening uh, between the rocks so the fish can swim through it. And I'm also trying to make sure that the rocks are stable. So in this case, I'm doing a slight adjustment here. So I get that, that cave appearance and I get them wedged together. So this rock you can see is, is really flat. I want to do a little bit of a, uh, a cave for the fish to go underneath. So I'm going to build that off my outcropping. So you can see this has kind of a natural dip in it. So if I put my um, rock against that, it should make a pretty cool cave. And it's a little thicker here, so I got to see if I if the rock should go like this or like this. You got to see how it fits in and make sure it's stable. I'm just doing some adjustments here. There we go. So you want to make sure your rocks are stable. So if a fish does get spooked and bump into it, it won't knock your cave over and uh, break your glass. So that's kind of what I like to do with my side-by-side -side outcrop outcropping. So there's a kind of territory on each side of the tank. So if you've got two dominant males, the males can uh, own each side of the tank rather than having a cave set up in the middle where one male will dominate. Uh, the other thing I like to do is put in a couple plants just to get rid of the uh, stark of the black and the uh, white. So let me grab a couple plants. And again, some people like Plastic. Some people hate plastic, but when you have cichlids, uh, South Americans will pull them out, Africans might eat them. So um, when you do your plants, for instance, these are two different sizes. Your shorter ones would go in front. So um, I like to put them in the corners, it kind of frames everything. So I'll put that there, I might put one over here. In this case, it's taller, but it's going on the side. So that's kind of a setup, how a setup might look. Let me get a little closer so you can see. But you can see tons of caves, really cool. So 
The smaller cichlids have protection, like that little cave in there. Then you come over here and there's some bigger caves um, where the fish, the bigger fish can hide or keep their territory. Fish can swim around it. So a really nice um, setup. And then the middle is open. So it's pretty cool. So in my next video, I'm gonna show you how to um, do one layer all the way across. It's not gonna be as high, but um, it'll give tons of caves for uh, territorial purposes and just for hiding um, of the smaller cichlids.